What are we seeing in telehealth right now? Yep. Okay. Great TF. I told you I had some data for you. <laughs> so broadly, what I hear is, okay, it's leveling out at some point. What's it leveling out at? Where does it still make sense? And how do we make sure that it's a great patient experience and well integrated and workable for the clinicians in terms of their workflows? So as long as I'm interim CIO at Boston Children's Hospital, I participate in the Children's Hospital Association CIO group. We have a monthly hot topics forum where we can bring up anything. We have you know, the standard discussion forum where you can pose a question and everybody within a short period of time usually answers the questions and helps each other. So I've posed a few out there. It's been very useful. One of them that was posed recently was around where are you, where is telehealth right now? And the percent ambulatory visits that are telemed, we're actually Boston Children's Hospital at the top of that with 33%. So that's wow. pretty, that's still a pretty high number. There's a couple here in the high 20s and mid 20s percent. There's probably about the bolus of them, maybe a bell curve here, are between 10 and 20 percent. And then there's just a small handful that are under 10 percent. And our breakout, because he asked for that and, and that was useful just to kind of to tease it out. So it's 33 percent in primary care, 25 percent for specialties, 94 percent for behavioral medicine right. and 50 percent for adolescent medicine so it's still pretty high yeah that is pretty high that's what we're seeing across the board not just in the children's hospitals it's roughly that it's a 10 to 20 and then 20 to 30 what do you think makes a difference between 10 and 30 percent is it the quality of the experience is it the offerings is it being able to have enough offerings Maybe there's not a complete set of offerings at some of the systems. I don't know, but I'm looking at the data here and the other ones that are 20% and above are in dense metropolitan areas. Right. So if you are, again, children's hospitals, if you are a parent with a child with a visit that you can do telehealth and not the commute, that probably is a factor in particular in those areas. Yeah, I mean, I'm just scanning down this list. I'd want to talk to Dallas and Houston. I'd love to talk to Myra. Myra, if I have it right, is at 16% Texas, Houston. Yeah, because it's not as dense as Boston. Boston's very dense. So it's the dense ones here at the top of this list. Boston, 33%. Stanford, so that's San very Francisco, yeah. Bay Area. Seattle. That's yeah. and DC. Yeah, yeah. So those are highly yeah. dense. The, the reason I was talking about Dallas and, and Houston is because they're dense, but they're, they're really spread out. I mean, yeah. you, you could have people driving from Waco to go to Dallas yeah. for a, a children's hospital right. visit. I mean, that's, yeah. that's an hour and a half, two hour drive. One other point I'd make on this would be some of the leading hospitals that have a broader, because of their specialties, a broader reach potentially regionally. Not just if you live in the Boston area to really want to drive to a visit if you could do telehealth, but just think of the broader reach for some of the subspecialties in some of the leading children's hospitals. So, there you I go. think this That's is as much as I can analyze that data. 